All right, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. I'll just go ahead and talk for a couple seconds just so that uh, just so that everyone can make sure that their audio settings are set up. If you need to change anything, just check out that uh, go to webinar window in the upper right corner of your screen. You should be able to change it to your headset or call in at the phone number. Uh, we're going to give everyone a couple more minutes to kind of log on before we get going. So we're going to give probably another 30 seconds or so just so that uh, there's still a bunch of people joining on as we're talking. So we'll go ahead and start this off in 30 seconds. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our presentation here today about the 3D Experience Works products. Specifically, we're gonna be diving into Project Planner and taking a look at all of the benefits of Project Planner and how it kind of works within the 3D Experience ecosystem. So to start us off here, I just as a brief introduction, my name is Stephen Murphy. I'm an application engineer working out of the Nashua, New Hampshire office. And one of my passions is design and also uh, workflow optimization. So I love being able to take a process that we've been doing for forever and to make it better. So to save you time, to save you energy, uh, to save you a headache from having to use antiquated software. So I really enjoy you know, learning what is the best out there, uh, what the best tools are, what the newest technology improvements are. And I love then taking that information and conveying it to everyone. So my goal today is to kind of show you what we've been working with in terms of the project planner role and the 3D experience platform, uh, just as an introduction to the software and uh, let you from there make decisions on whether or not you could see it being applicable to your current workflows or your current management style. So recently there has been a huge push between the relationship of software on your computer and software in the cloud. So we're all used to our uh, computer-based programs. So, I mean, if you've been using your computer apps like SolidWorks, SolidWorks Simulation, Composer, Electrical, PDM, uh, those, those applications aren't going anywhere. Those are kind of the, the bread and butter and the basis for everything we're doing in 3D Experience. You still get to use your, your apps, you still get to use your programs on your local computer but instead you now have access to a wider variety of apps services and content that are all located on the cloud so this isn't by any means a replacement but it instead is an addition to your current programs and your current software so for example the applications that are located on the cloud include the x design and x shape apps uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to check those out i would highly recommend x design is a CAD software, completely cloud-based, and X-Shape is a sub-D modeling app that allows you to do that push-pull, kind of the industrial design approach to creating models. And then you get applications that are stronger versions of your desktop apps. So for example, uh, Simulia Works, being able to take advantage of that Abacus solver to run your nonlinear simulations on the cloud. Uh, Delmio Works, which is a fully integrated ERP system, uh, so covering everywhere from shop floor to order management to you know support uh, demulio works is a huge huge addition to the cloud-based applications and then anovia works anovia you know, was initially a plm on-premise solution and is now migrated to anovia works which is a plm solution that you can access from anywhere and we're going to be touching a lot into the anovia works portfolio today as we work with Project Planner. But I do want to point out that that doesn't just end with the applications that you get on the cloud. You also get services like engineering and making services on the uh, 3D Experience Marketplace, as well as being able to find part suppliers on the marketplace as well. So being able to get content from the web. And what the end result is, is you have 
this 3D experience works, you have all the tools at your disposal to maximize your workflows. So the trick is making sure that the integration of the desktop applications and the cloud applications, services, and content is extremely smooth and very easy to use. And so that's why today we're gonna to be going through those live for you. Now, the 3D Experience Works platform is composed of four primary areas. Uh, first up, one off is the one everyone here is probably used to, it's SolidWorks. So SolidWorks is your base CAD design software that has a ton of functionality and allows you to you know, conceptualize, create, validate, and set up your designs for your customers. Now, SolidWorks is kind of the bread and butter of what we're doing. And I'm even going to show you today as we're working with our cloud softwares, we're still going to be using SolidWorks and we're still heavily reliant on using SolidWorks if we want to. But on top of that, we get into these other products. So for example, Simulia Works. I mentioned earlier, the Abacus Solver is renowned for being the best nonlinear static solver uh, in the world. And now you have access to that by using SolidWorks and 3D Experience Works. You can take your simulations and bump up the power level. So rather than trying to you know, make it work inside of SolidWorks, you have the best tools on the market to make sure your product works correctly. Then there's Delmio Works. So Delmio Works is a huge shift from just your standard SolidWorks because it allows a full end-to-end -end ERP management system. So everything from tracking your issues, tracking whether or not your machines are currently running, uh, what your scrap rate is, you know, what the prices of your materials are going to be in six months. Delmio Works has a huge portfolio to allow you to better manage your company and to better, you know, service your customers. And finally on the list is Anovia Works. And this is really the idea of managing your software, managing your data in order to plan, develop, and release your product in the best way possible. So you're not just managing your revisions on an individual file, you're managing the entire life cycle of your products and everything around your products. So, you know, parts are no longer created in a vacuum. You have to have information about who's creating them, uh, how long it's taking them to make the parts. You need to know who's manufacturing them. And so Anovia Works helps to kind of integrate all of those different pieces of the modern workplace into a single software. So when we're talking about the 3D Experience platform, we first want to start talking about the different roles that everyone plays inside of your company. So here we have a list of a bunch of different potential jobs that people do. There's sales, there's executives, there's someone who's specializing in simulation, you have your design engineers. And what the 3D Experience platform looks to do is to provide a link between each of these jobs. So it's not just about doing your job better, but it's making sure that what you provide your colleagues is also more useful for them and in a format that they can understand and use for development. So the end result is decreasing the amount of distance between these different roles and helping everyone to do their jobs much more efficiently. Now, let's talk a little bit more about roles. We're gonna be talking about two primary roles today. Uh, first off is kind of the role of the industrial designer. So the industrial designer is going to use something called the collaborative business innovator. These are tools created in order to both assist in collaboration and also store document data. It's also a very useful tool for communicating and collaborating, specifically with the SWIM communities, which we're going to be talking about in depth today. Industrial designers will also have access to a role called Anovia Works, or the role within the collaborative industry innovator, which allows you to uh, create issues, to control tasks, and the collaborative designer for SolidWorks, which allows you to bring your SolidWorks CAD data in and out of the cloud seamlessly from within the app itself. And the last off, uh, one of the roles we won't be touching on today, but another role that you would expect the industrial designer to have is the 3D sculptor. The idea of using that, once again, push-pull, sub-D modeling in order to generate your parts 
in a way that's not necessarily parametric, but is instead based on uh, images and sketches and consumer feedback. But this is what the 3D experience platform is to the industrial designer. When the industrial designer logs in, these are the roles, these are the tools that he sees. But let's talk about what marketing sees because what we've talked about so far, yes, some of it is useful for marketing. So in this case, they're gonna have that same collaborative business innovator. They're going to be able to communicate and collaborate with their each other's colleagues. But the other tools that you see there, the 3D sculptor and the uh, being able to link with SolidWorks, the marketing people don't really care about. They would rather have access to Project Planner. So the idea of an application that allows you to plan out deadlines, create Gantt charts, and to be able to understand when you're on time, what's causing you to fall behind time, and how to fix it and who to talk to. Uh, they might also use an application like the Social Business Analyst with NetVibes, and that allows you to take tons of information and to sift through what the public is thinking. So rather than reading 5,000 tweets, you can go and create a graph on the general temperament of you know, the American people on COVID-19 response. So a perfect tool for the marketing team, but not something the industrial designer is really going to take a look at. And that's why the 3D experience platform is gonna work so smoothly within multiple types of industries is because it is the tools that you specifically need and it's no extra fluff. So you only set up the, the roles and the responsibilities that match what you're doing with your job, but you don't need, you know, the, the marketing team doesn't need anything from Delmia Works or uh, the designer doesn't necessarily need to be tracking tweets. And therefore you're able to create this tight system by using all the different types of applications within the dot works portfolio. So the Delmia works, Inovia works, Simulia works, all the different tools, depending on your individual job. And so that today is gonna bring us to the project planner role. And so with the project planner role, we're specifically looking at uh, basically optimizing the activities of your team by being able to plan and execute and monitor project status in real time and to be able to take that information and to adapt to grow based on what you're seeing is currently happening. Uh, this also empowers team members to collaborate from anywhere. So rather than you know, having the limitation of the office, as is you know, really important in 2020, being able to communicate and function from wherever you happen to be, whether or not it's at home or in the office. The Project Planner app is what is going to glue the different projects together. But before we jump directly into the Project Planner app, we're going to instead start off with 3D Swim. 3D Swim is part of the collaborative business innovator role and is essential to all collaboration on the platform. This is one of those apps that pretty much everyone in your company is going to be able to take advantage of in one way or another. Because what 3D Swim does is it links up your, your business, your product, uh, and your different projects and allows you for better communication so that you have a, a faster turnaround, you have a better business model, you can better gauge expectations, and then you have a customized experience with uh, your product itself. And let's see how that actually works. So we're gonna jump right now into the 3D Experience Platform Live, and we're going to be working on a project uh, in our setup here for creating changes to a mountain scooter the idea being that this mountain scooter was developed at some previous time, and we're now tasked with going in and making the scooter lighter, uh, and we get to decide how to do that. So the first screen we're looking at here, and if you've never seen the 3D Experience platform, uh, don't worry, it is quite simple. We're working within our mountain scooter project swim community, and within this swim community, we have different posts so consider it to be your your facebook your forum uh how you communicate within the 3d experience platform so notice it starts off here saying that okay there's this project that we have to do in the next two months now let's get started and then people can post questions they have they can quote uh post images so in this case let's take a look at this post okay so it's an update to the team that's saying that 
we've received the 3D models for the project. It includes an image from one of the 3D play apps, another application within the collaborative business innovator role. And what we're going to do is communicate. So Nikita here saying thanks for the quick answer. So we have the models. He was waiting for them. Now we can get to work. Now, you'll notice that there's different indicators here. This here is just a generic post, whereas this is an idea. So visually, you're able to understand what your team is intending without having to spend too much time trying to decipher what's going on. So we want to lighten up the scooter. And notice that we have three phases, a new idea. That new idea can be moved to a concept. And then we can submit that idea as it is actually completed. And notice here, we were able to get feedback from our team asking, hey, why aren't these slotted? You know, why are we making circular cutouts instead of why aren't we slotting this pivot here in order to cut weight? And that's a great idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that new idea and we're gonna move it into the concept stage. And we're going to say, uh, you know, move forward uh, with the weight reduction. And, you know, the spelling does count. But uh, thank goodness for <laughs> autocorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move that idea to the next stage. So it's going to update our post. It's going to go ahead and move this bar to the next phase. And it's going to provide even more information. So if I want to, I can go in and I can filter by just the ideas that are currently available. I can see what stages they're in. I can see what's going on in my project at all times. So if you have three, four, five, six, seven ideas, things don't get lost in your, uh, things don't just get lost inside of your chat screen, uh, which happens a lot when you're working in different project teams, is there's so many information, so much ideas that, you know, a question or a, a piece of information gets lost. Also here, we have another post asking about the chain guard. So where's the 3D model for this part? Did we not receive it? Do we have to remodel it? Uh, what's going on with there? So the team can be updated on what needs to happen on the fly. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how the content is stored in the 3D experience platform. So here, I'm just gonna move over to another tab and we're gonna take a look at the content that we have available in the platform. So in this case, I've set up some bookmarks for models that I'm very interested in. So I'll start out and you'll notice that this physical product here, I'll just drag it over and see what it is. This is our entire mountain scooter. And so if I want to inspect this even more, I can go ahead and move this into the 3D play, just simple drag and drop functionality. And I can even you know, maximize my, my app here to be able to inspect it easier. We can take a look at what's going on in our assembly. We can go into the tools here and we can explode. So, you know, without having to go into SolidWorks and make a, a fancy explode view, we can explode it based off of the assembly components in order to get a better idea of where the pieces we're working on are, to get a better idea of how many parts we're dealing with and to better understand our model. Okay, so we took a look at this. Now we wanna take a look at specific sub-assemblies within my component. So I'm just gonna go underneath my data, underneath my physical product, and I wanna look at the related objects using once again, another Anovia app. And these applications are all part of the collaborative industry innovator, which allows you to work with your data and to understand kind of what's, what's going on in the process. So notice here, this is kind of the uh, the treehouse or the systems engineering view of your 3D model. And you're able to look at the different children and the different CAD files that are available. So in terms of the children, this is the top level assembly. I'm kind of interested in this wheel assembly. If I drag it over, notice it'll break it off and I can focus on it. So you're able to kind of move around with your data and a way that feels much more uh, normal, much more uh, simple 
than necessarily browsing through a ton of different file folders. And if I want to inspect this even further, I'm just going to pick it up and drop it into my 3D Play app. OK, perfect. Here's my wheel. And this is the part we've been talking about removing weight from. Uh, this is uh, the pivot or the, the shaft, whatever you want to call it. And we want to go ahead and get rid of some weight. Now, I like Nikita's idea. I thought that, you know what, slots are probably the way to go. So I want to communicate that with the team. I'll just create a new drawing on, on the document itself. And we'll draw on the slots. So this is our newest idea is, OK, let's try and cut weight by creating you know, a system of slots. And we'll take this, and we're just going to share it directly to the 3D Swim community. So you don't have to screenshot. It's all integrated directly. Uh, we're going to make this a new idea inside of my mountain scooter project. And we're going to call it slots are better. And we'll just call it something. We'll describe it as slot. Uh, slot design seems viable. You know, we want to start a discussion. We want to get input from each and every one of our coworkers who might have good feedback. So we'll go ahead, publish that to the community, which is going to automatically make a post, uh, notify anybody who's following that community. So anyone who's really involved in the project is going to be notified that there's something new. And here we are. We have a new idea saying that maybe we should go ahead and operate and create these slots. OK, this is 3D Swim, the idea of being able to communicate the changes you want to be able to communicate you know, what your team needs in a very, very easy uh, fashion. Now, you're able to kind of do that, that brainstorming, that uh, proof of concept, asking questions. You can share your models and create wikis. You can even add polls to see what people think about different ideas. Basically, 3D Swim is the bread and butter for allowing seamless collaboration on the cloud. It's, it's a way to communicate that's directly linked to your software. So rather than being an external chat service, it is directly linked to all your models, directly linked to uh, all of your files inside of the cloud. Now, let's move into the project planner rule, because this is what we're here to talk about today, is how you can use the 3D Experience platform and the project planner tools in order to better manage your team. So conventionally, you kind of have this top-down planning where you know somebody takes a management class and goes in and says, okay, we're going to do this. And they give everyone a schedule. And then within the first three days, the schedule kind of goes to heck and nobody's making their deadlines. And now we're having meetings to try and figure out why the meetings didn't happen. Uh, and it water falls down and you don't have any connection with your data. That's the conventional method of planning. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the Project Planner app, which is team-based planning. And I'm gonna, instead of reading these off, I'm gonna show you what that looks like inside a 3D experience platform. So just going over to my Project Management tab, we're gonna have access to our Mountain Scooter project. And we know we have some changes we need to make over the course of the next year. Oh, I accidentally muted myself. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to assess our, our different tasks we've created. We're going to see what exactly we need to do over the course of the next you know, two months to make this project work. And so let's start out by looking at the schedule. Because this is the way I personally prefer to look at a task, is looking at what you have to do and when you have to do it by. So you notice here that we have our uh, very, very standard kind of schedule view of what's going on. We have our start date. This is when we made that initial post inside the 3D Swim community saying, hey, we have a project started. And then we have different tasks. So, you know, a task to redesign the suspension. We have to produce some, uh, some step files, uh, some neutral file formats. Uh, we have to make the physical improvements to the, to the model here, to the pivot. And then, of course, we're going to make some production drawings for our customer. 
Well, what we want to start out with is we want to intelligently set up these tasks so that they're, we're going to meet our deliverable dates. But we don't have to just arbitrarily assign dates. Instead, what I can do is I can basically say that these production drawings, we're going to want to work on those after the improvements are completed. So I'm just going to take the dot and drag it over in order to set up a dependency on that pivot improvement. So until that improvement is completed, we're not going to start the drawings. Also, the production of the step files, we could do it after the redesign, but we also probably want to do it after our pivot improvement is completed. So let's go ahead and just add more dependencies. Just by drag and dropping, we're able to go ahead and create a schedule or a timeline of events. Now I want to kind of reorder these so we flow downward. So let's go ahead and just drag and drop this different task down. So we have a better view of what's going on. And you know, we could put the step files all the way at the bottom if we wanted. All of it depends on what you like visually. Now, notice here that we have some very, very cool tools within the Project Planner app that allow you to have this um, moving or this adjustable schedule. And what that means is that if I go ahead and click on this task, so I want to look at the details of the pivot improvement. Uh, here, title, don't have a description. But what I want to do is I want to redesign that pivot. So notice that the parent project, of course, is a My Mountain Scooter project. Um, the priority right now is set to medium. And we're going to go ahead and say that this takes three days. And we're going to go ahead and add a plus or minus factor. We don't really know whether or not it'll take two or four, depending on where we currently are. But we want to be able to meet that deadline. So we're going to put the information into our system. And it'll adjust what the overall deadline is. And now we're going to get feedback. So notice here I have a goal. My goal is that we want to have all of the engineering deliverables completed by this date. So we just have a date, May 20th. It's fixed on the timeline. But if I go ahead and move this deliverable, and I say, oh, in order to make my engineering deliverable, I have to finish my pivot improvement. Now, you'll notice that this is going to turn yellow, indicating that, and if going back to the summary to get a better understanding of the overall view here, it is one task that is at risk, meaning that I don't have enough time. If it takes the full duration of three days plus the extra day I put in the plus or minus in the variance, we're at risk of being late. You know, this indicates, okay, how many tasks are we cutting close? How many are going to be late? and how many are at risk. Now note that this is all very flexible. So let's say that the redesign on the suspension is done early. So whoever controls this uh, task or the manager, depending on how you want to set it up, can come in and say, OK, we actually finished the redesign on the suspension. So rather than having the maturity state of in progress, we'll say it's done. And when we hit Save, it's going to adjust our components. So it's going to give us more time on making that pivot improvement. And if that deliverable is just you know, a couple days later, it's going to allow for the maximum condition time for our component. Now, here is part of the coolest uh, you know, features within this task management within the Project Planner app. You do have the ability to just add tasks here as well. So, in this case, I want to add a task for some FEA analysis. And we'll say it's just going to take a day, plus or minus a day. Um, and we'll go ahead and create this task. This task, obviously, we're going to want to do after we are done with the rest of our files. So, we'll go ahead and slap that into the end here. If I want to assign someone specific to it, I can go in and say, all right, I would really prefer if uh, you know some assignee was going to do this task. So, you know, I'll go ahead and search out Nikita since he was so interested in this project. We'll go ahead and 
give them some responsibilities here and say, okay, you've been assigned this FEA task that you won't be able to start until you obviously have the models. And maybe we're using a different file here. And you're able to grow and move your project dynamically based on what's actually happening in real time. So this isn't locked in. You don't just put numbers in at the beginning and everything is locked down. You lock down, say, your deliverable date. You can lock down you know, your production date, and it'll tell you what tasks are at risk or do not have enough time in order to be completed. Now, let's go ahead and add in a verification process here. So this pivot improvement, I want to do a, an engineering change order for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add in a new project. And I'm gonna say, okay, um, I'm gonna call this ECO1245. Uh, and the idea here is that I have an ECO form or template already created with the tasks that go along with my ECO process. So I'm gonna generate this off of the ECO and I'm gonna say, uh, you know, this is gonna be the pivot ECO change for the customer in this case. And I'm gonna create this new project. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate this project as part of my mountain scooter project with these tasks already generated that I know I need to complete. So notice here, I, I have a bunch of different tasks like analysis of need, preliminary sketch, and I can go in and I can start to move these to match up to my current project. So now I'm running this parallel process. I can say, okay, I need this uh, redesign to be completed before production. And now it's gonna shift around and say, okay, these are the tasks that have some flexibility that we might need to save some time. Um, and we can go even even more in detail. So let's take a look at this 3D modeling. On this 3D modeling task, I wanna actually take get, get this finished immediately. So I have the idea in my head now, I wanna work on the 3D modeling for this ECO process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna change the priority here to high because I think this is very important to get done early on in the process. And I'm gonna say that I'm currently in progress. So rather than having, say, no idea what's going on, I can say, okay, I'm about 10% in because I've started working on the progress. I know what I'm gonna do. I wanna know the changes I wanna make. Um, assignees, I can just assign it to myself. And then let's go ahead and add on some attachments. So in order to add attachments inside of my Project Planner app, all I have to do is go ahead and search them out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search for uh, 227, or I could search any of the many attributes that this assembly had. I'm just gonna drag and drop that into my attachments. I'll go ahead and attach the CAD family as well. And then for deliverables, I want a completed drawing that's going to have all of these changes implemented. So I'll go ahead and take my PDF version of my CAD drawing and I'll drop it into deliverables. And what that does is that now when I generate my tasks, I have access to all this information. So I'll go ahead and hit save here. It'll update. And now notice that it's in progress. So it's moved what I'm currently working on. And going back to the summary here, we do have the ability to check out what's going on. We have the number of deliverables by their current state. So how many deliverables are done, how many are in progress, and how many are, are, are left to do. We have the total number of assignees with tasks open. So notice here, we can kind of manage the workload of our team to better understand who's doing what and who has what obligations. Uh, we can see the timeline of how the tasks break down. We can see obviously how many tasks there are and what the progress of those tasks are as well. And finally, we can see all of the content that's been linked to inside of the project planner tasks. So notice these are all the different files that I have linked to the various tasks from FEA to working on the pivot improvement 
that we're all here. So we have the ability to quite easily work with our, our files all within that same system. Now, that's excellent. That gives us our project management. And the benefit here is that it's, it's planning for all users. It's not some stagnant piece of paper that somebody created and then you know within the first 15 minutes is wrong. It gets automatically updated on the fly based on what your task is up to, how far you are. Um, so it's dynamic, it's automated, it's connected directly to your files. So the whole benefit of a PLM system is now you're connected to your PDFs, you're connected to your CAD files, you're connected to all the different pieces that you need for deliverables. And that's huge. In the project planning world, being able to you know, create your Gantt charts and your milestones, to be able to define your dependencies within your live tasks, and to define references and deliverables is a huge step in the right direction of optimizing your management workflow. But note that it doesn't just have to be project managers doing this. It can be the CAD users. It can be anyone who has feedback and needs to say update a task or to say, you know, say this is running late. How are we going to make up lost time for this? Now, another huge benefit of the Project Planner app, as well as the 3D Experience platform, is the collaboration with SolidWorks specifically. So the strongest argument for collaborative design is seamless integration between cloud and app CAD. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go make some changes inside of SolidWorks. So this is my SolidWorks app, or application on my desktop. Notice that we just have the PLM activated inside of our task pane on the right side. So something that anyone who's used PDM or anyone who's used SolidWorks is very comfortable with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my collaborative tasks. Within my collaborative tasks, we'll be able to identify uh, with what tasks I have to work on. Now, for me, I just want to look at uh, tasks specifically related to this new ECO process. So I'm going to go ahead and search out my ECO uh, 1245, and I want to look at my in progress. So I moved it within the cloud application inside of SolidWorks. It's moved as well. And we can go ahead and take a look. Okay, we have our application, we have our file, so I'll just go ahead and drag and drop it into SolidWorks, like it's no big deal, in order to open up our model that we're working off of, and then I can see my deliverable. Okay, so I know I need a PDF drawing of this component's drawings. Well, easy enough, let's go ahead and open up the drawing for this component. And within our SolidWorks PLM, linking up to the 3D Experience platform, we'll be able to have that check-in, check-out function, uh, functionality that everyone's used to using. So in this case, I want to make changes to this drawing and this sub-assembly. So I'll just go ahead, select both of these, and reserve them. So we'll reserve our individual file. Note this drawing hasn't been checked into the 3D Experience platform yet. And again, everything is cloud-based, so you want to make sure you have that security, have that connection within SolidWorks. Uh, this is the first time I'm using the app today, so it's going to ask me to log in. I'm using my monitor scooter. Uh, of course, my collaborative space, that's where my files are stored in order to collaborate. And we're going to go ahead and check out our files. And we'll, we notice this one's not in there, so we'll go ahead and save that file for the first time. Because uh, if I try and reserve it, notice that it's not saved into the platform yet. So we'll go ahead and save this initial file into the 3D Experience platform. So we have the drawing. Um, so we'll go ahead and save these. I'm not going to release, and we're just going to do this as the uh, the initial upload for that drawing here. And the benefit here is that we're pulling information from the cloud system. We're pulling it 
from a highly developed PLM system. So we have interrelated links with all our different file types, with all our different types of um, tasks as well. So here, we'll go ahead and reserve that as well. And let's go ahead and make our changes. So we know this is the part that we need to change. We want to add our cutout series inside of this part. And again, I'm going to go ahead and reserve my part to work on it. Of course, got to check it out. Reserve, same verbiage as you'd expect. And we'll just use the design library here to go ahead and do that nice drag and drop functionality that SolidWorks is so renowned for. Um, we'll go ahead and just add these slots and we'll go ahead and uh, put it on that plane asking me for the center. Excellent. I'll go ahead and select this edge in order to create my slots. Done. Okay, now we're done. So let's go ahead and upload our file. So just a right click and save. Updating our file itself. Okay, revision, comment. Now, you know, added four slots, ECO uh, one, two, four, five, five, four, actually. But, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and release that after saving. And maybe we want to up rev as well, depends on, you know, what we're doing, where we are in the process, all the, depends on what your workflow is configured as. We have that part. And now note that we have a whole nother level of functionality within PLM. We have something called maturity. And what maturity does is it allows you to basically change the state of your part in order to go from in work to frozen to released. And the idea is saying that this part's complete. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the frozen maturity so that no one accidentally edits it. So in order to edit it, they would have to go in, check it out, change the maturity to um, to in work, and then make their changes. So we're communicating what we want with our part by changing the maturity state. All right, now let's go back over to our assembly here. And remember, we wanted the chain link guard to be added. So let's go ahead and find it. To find it, we can go in and uh, rather than having to do all the effort of say browsing, uh, what we can do is we can just look up the word guard. So we know that they probably had a model for this at some point and they just didn't add it to the assembly. And we can go in and we can actually preview the different parts, the different components that we're searching. So because it's a interlinked PLM system, uh, you can even see my swim post about the chain guard from earlier so completely integrated okay this looks like the correct part we can just drag that into my model you know in typical in typical solidworks fashion although i should not have shift selected because i don't need two of them um and then we you know can mate this in using the you know the processes that we all know and love alt dragging which has saved us so much time in our lives. There we go. Now it's made it into position. And now I want some bolts. So in this case, I want to be able to find some bolt in order to put into my part. So to do that though, I don't necessarily have to know the name of my bolt. I don't have to know uh, the individual component, I can actually just search up the word bolt. So no matter how many brackets you have, no matter how many bolts you had in the past, you are able to find your data. There are a ton of different ways to filter. There's a ton of different ways to kind of work to find the, the part you actually want. And in this case, we have uh, a bolt here. Let's go ahead and preview this in more detail here with the preview. And note we can look at different relations. We can look at the different configurations, basically because every part is a different configuration. 
and every configuration is a different part, we can find the actual one we want and we can add that to our model here. So in our case, uh, I can actually drag directly from the 3D experience or I can just look it up in here. And so we're gonna look it up. We're gonna find out here's the bolt we want and we drag and drop it into our model. And again, we use uh, you know all the tricks we know and love in order to set the right configuration, do our drag and drop functionality to go ahead and mate those in. And we are off to the races. And of course, I forgot to hit the button to flip. So we'll just flip that mate alignment. No problem. And we're done. So we've made our changes. We'll go ahead and save that. Let's go to the drawing and see if we need to make any updates. Uh, of course, we probably want to add callouts for these two bolts here and our component. So we'll go into that view. Just run the uh, run the auto balloon here inside the view. Add that extra detail, and we're good to go. So we'll go ahead, go back to my PLM, select my two files, save them in. When we do that, we're going to go ahead and say OK. Release these after I check it in. Maybe we want to add the revision as well, depending on you know, again, what our system is set up to be. And this is all being driven by the integration with the cloud. So all these files were given to me from, you know, the 3D experience platform. They were given to me from the project planner role. And now I'm just working with them here. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and make that PDF that we wanted. So we'll just do the old uh, save as here. Save this as a uh, PDF and we'll save it directly to my cloud drive. So here with, within Mountain Scooter, we'll go ahead and just replace this file. And then within the platform, I can go ahead. I want to I want to say that the job is done. So without ever leaving SolidWorks, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that to do. I'm going to open up that 3D modeling. And underneath my deliverable, I can say, OK, um, we're done. We have this completed. So that's uh, that's uploaded here. And then let's go ahead and set my maturity state to done. And now my role in, in this task is completed. So this is a huge shift from your conventional SolidWorks uh, document storage, from integrating your tasks with actual CAD data and PDFs. And in fact, you do have a ton of extra functionality because it's all in the cloud, which means that there's no reason um, so, for example, if I go into this ECO and I look at the different tasks I have remaining, I'll go ahead and just turn on my webcam real quick. And the idea is that you can update tasks from any device. So here I'm just on my phone and I'm going to go ahead and log in to ECO 124. I want to take status and uh, static analysis and I'm going to move that into in progress because I'm going to be working on it. And then maybe I want to take the static analysis. I'm going to go ahead and edit that and I'm going to increase its priority. Uh, and I'm going to say, oh, I think it's urgent. So, you know, I'm, I'm out and about on my phone and I can update my project on the fly. So that's just using, you know, any phone or tablet because it's all cloud based in order to manage the software. So, this is that link to the cloud we're talking about. This is the integration between your desktop applications and your cloud data that allows for you know, better use of data. It allows you to very quickly do tasks if someone wants to never leave the SolidWorks window to 
use 3D experience, they don't have to. If someone wants to, you know, check on the update of the project on the, their phone, it's very easy to. Uh, and it's very easy to reuse library files and view dependencies. So to understand how your different components are linked together within your, uh, your system and within your data management. Because it's a different way of storing data that's more conducive to your different tasks. All right. Last but not least, we've talked about the Project Planner app. We've talked about how you're able to relate that to your different users with 3D Swim and how you're able to work with SolidWorks directly with the cloud application. Let's talk about issue management now. And this is the idea that we want to reduce risks inside of our design process and increase productivity. So very basic approach. And you can do that using the cloud integration. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to take a look at our model. So remember, we have the 227 here. And I'll go ahead and just refresh to make sure that's all loaded correctly. So, you know, I just made that update. I saved it to the cloud, uh, refresh my page, and we'll go ahead and search for, you know, 227 because that's, we know the assembly I updated. We're gonna go ahead and take this, um, and we're going to work off of, da, 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 da. we're gonna take a look at that assembly. Oh, I tried to grab the CAD family instead of grabbing the actual physical product. So that's the one of the keys to understanding the 3D Experience platform is that you want to be working off of your physical product. So here, you know, within the, the CAD package, we wanna make sure that we have, save this, note as revision B, and inside of the platform, we're gonna go ahead and search that up. And we're just gonna sort by physical product. we're going to add that in. So notice I was able to load my part successfully with the new updates. And notice I can also filter around. And, and what I want to do is I want to say, I just made a change to my model. Uh, somebody needs to check that. You know, I can't just remove material without running some sort of simulation or confirmation that this is going to be safe. So in this case, I'm gonna create a new issue. And the issue management allows me to create issues and say, okay, uh, you know, I wanna check for the buckling inside of my new component. I could add a description um, that, that, you know, we don't want our weight reduction feature to, you know, uh, compromise part. And they're just going to run a simulation. We can change how, what a priority it is, what the due date is if we want to. Okay, that can be done by tomorrow. Uh, related objects is very cool because I can basically say, hey, I know I gave you an assembly to work off of, but this individual component is the part I care about. And I can either select the part, I can select the entire assembly as well, but boom, that's the part I want to work off of. Notice that I have my physical product. It gives me the context of my file as well. So because everything is interrelated, because you have that relationship data, you're not just saying, oh, go work on that part somewhere. It, it gives you all the data you need to open it up to understand where how it's going to be used. Um, you can assign it to anyone you want. So um, it's not Nikita's lucky day. We're assigning him all the random tasks that, um, that I don't wanna do, or I mean, I'm too busy to do. So we'll go ahead and do that. We can add attachments. So in this case, I could go in and say, oh, um, let me give them the assembly drawing. So I'm gonna turn off that type tag and we'll give them the, uh, you know, the PDF of my part. 
So here, drop in the PDF. And then we can say, okay, go ahead and start. And that's going to create that issue. It's going to notify the user. He gets an email saying, hey, you have a new task to do. You have a new issue here to go ahead and create. You need to you know, run the buckling test for the FEA and we're off to the races. So being able to, here we go, have our tasks, have our issue management. So, you know, here's a potential risk, here's a problem. Uh, I can, you know, change the state if it's in work, if it's, uh, you know, pending approval, then I can approve it. It has all the information for him here so that he doesn't need to, uh, you know, go hunting and pecking. You don't have to waste any time in that matter. Uh, and then resolved by, you can put the simulation file right here. So once you run the simulation, you can confirm, yes, it works and provide that data. So you're able to reduce your risk. You're able to have all of the basically configuration within the 3D experience works portfolio in order to mitigate risk, in order to add a traceability that yes, this has been tested, we can link it back to that issue and to approve the changes. So you have a better way to, uh, to monitor your data. And so that's kind of the value proposition of the 3D Experience Works platform. Uh, we went into depth on the project planner, but know that it's not just the project planner app, but how it relates your data to all your tasks into SolidWorks and down to the issue management. And that's really where you see the benefit of this cloud-based approach. And again, of course, um, we're solid experts, so we'd love to assist you in configuring, setting up your 3D experience platform. Uh, just reach out at any point. So thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the chat and see if there's any questions, and then we'll uh, wrap it up from there. And it looks like uh, no questions in the chat, but if you do have any questions, please don't feel uh, don't be afraid to reach out and uh, we'll help you with that as you go. Thanks everyone and uh, have a great afternoon.